Karen. Yes. Were you aware that there are angels all around us? I was aware. Of that. I knew you were. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently they are everywhere. And all we need to do to get help from them is to ask for it. Right? Sounds easy enough. It does. However, <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Best League Plans with Mice and Men, it's so much easier sometimes to say than to do. Right. Now, most of modern society associates angels with religious traditions and are usually seen as supernatural beings who serve God. But have you ever asked yourself, what are they really? I mean, are they intermediaries between us and God? Are they guides and protectors for us here on Earth? And just what is the difference between an archangel and just a plain angel? Mm -hmm. This is the topic we're diving into on this episode. And by the time we're done, you're going to know everything that you ever wanted to know about angels and then some. Nice. Thanks to our fascinating guest, Nicole Bigley, from the world-renowned A Psychic Story Show. We're hitting the ground running, so don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully... We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait... You joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three dimensional world we all live in. This is the, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Hey there, I'm Will. And I'm Karen. Today we're thrilled to introduce you to Nicole Bigley, a renowned intuitive and energy healer with a passion for transforming lives. For over 20 years, Nicole has been using her psychic abilities to connect with angels and guide others on their spiritual journeys. Now, her spiritual gifts became evident at a young age when memories of her connection to the spiritual realm before her incarnation here on Earth came to hit her in the head. And as a psychic intuitive, she has the ability to tap into the wisdom of guides, angels, and even your higher self to share insightful messages from Source. You may already be familiar with Nicole as the creator and host of several popular podcasts and may be best known for A Psychic's Story, a top four spiritual podcast in the U.S. that receives millions of downloads a year with listeners in all 195 countries around the world. Her podcasts feature real stories shared by real people who lead extraordinary lives and her warm and compassionate approach creates a welcoming space for listeners to delve into the supernatural and gain a deeper understanding of their own spiritual paths. She's also the co-author of Looking for Angels, A Guide to Understanding and Connecting with Angels. And that book released on 11-11, a date that we absolutely adore. She's here to clear all the confusion surrounding these beings and what we know. And she's here to help us on our spiritual journeys. Nicole, thank you so much for coming on the show. Wow, thank you for that introduction. I'm thrilled to be here. Like you mentioned before we started talking, this has been a long time in coming, and we're excited to finally able to get you on the show. And this is a topic we've kind of touched on on the peripheries, but never really dove into as deeply as we should have. So we are way remiss. So um, I think the, the, the universe was obviously just waiting for us to be able to get you on the show to, so we can talk about it. So um, uh, let's just dive right into it. Angels. What exactly are angels? Well, there's a lot of debate out there, but from my experience, angels are our spirit team. So when we come here on earth, we have a team of celestial beings that support us and guide us in all ways. It's it's a universal law, which we can kind of talk about later, but it can be comprised of your loved ones from the other side, which are usually for love and reassurance, but also archangels, which are celestial beings that were created what I recall as like God source energy that have never incarnated here on earth. And so as such, we, um, there's, we have free will and they work with us to help guide us. Then there's ascended masters. So think of Gandhi, Jesus Christ, Mother Teresa, people who have lived these earthly lives. And then as they've ascended over time, when they get to the other side, they want to help us. And then we also have guardian angels and guardian angels I kind of love this. So I work a lot with Archangel Michael and he showed me that our guardian angels, we contracted with them before we came here. So we essentially already gave them permission to help guide us, but they're always by our side. They're working in tandem with us. And then because we've given them free will and we, or we, because of our free will, we've contracted, they can intervene on our behalf. 
And so there's many, many more. You hear a lot of people that feel like they have animal guides as well, whether that was from a pet or also from earth and that sort of thing. But yeah, we have a ton. And just real quick before I toss it back to you, we can have anywhere between 20 to upwards of 200 or 300 on our spirit team. So when people come to me and say, well, who is on my team? I'm like, I'm not going to give you a laundry list of every single one, but certain ones will step forward based on what's happening in our lives at that time. That is a crowded room. (laughs) It really is. Yes, it is. So is a guardian angel the same as a spirit guide? You can just different you, terminology. Yeah, you can use them interchangeably. Um, it's funny. My my spirit team tells me not to get hung up necessarily on the definitions a lot, but as humans, we want to be hung up on the definitions to better understand. And yes, uh, but I really kind of use a guardian angel. Think about them as always behind you. You know, so when mm-hmm. I'm looking at you guys, I can actually see like a line standing behind you. And depending on your guardian angels, like that's just how they show up for my in my clairvoyance or my third eye directly behind you. And um, Yes, you can call them a spirit guide, but they're they're kind of distinct because, again, you've contracted with them. However, spirit guide and or spirit team can be used interchangeably for your whole team or that whole collective, if that makes sense. Well, so many questions. I can't quite <laughs> mind. So, okay. Um, first, I have to hop back just a second because then just to clarify my own mind, when we say the word angels, people mm-hmm. think of these beings with these wings that uh, – encompass you and uh, they have a you know, maybe a halo of light around their heads and uh, sit yeah, and, and, and serve God in religious practices and things like that. You made it sound like angels can be just like you mentioned, ascended masters, uh, past loved ones and things like that, spirit guides. So you're saying that they're one and the same, except that you mentioned that the, the archangel might be a little different. But. Yeah, yeah, no, great question, and thanks for asking for the clarity. So our spirit team is comprised of, of a number of different types of beings. Archangels are a very distinct being set, like celestial being. They're the closest to God's source energy. They have never incarnated. Therefore, they don't have ego. They don't have a lot of the other things. They're essentially very pure and operate at a very high vibration. Guardian angels are similar to that, um, but I'm not going to get into all that to confuse your listeners, but your guardian angels are always there by your side. And then ascended masters, they are at a different level because they've ascended. So vibrationally, they are able to operate at a certain level to also help us, but they have more human type of characteristics because they used to live here on earth. So that's kind of the distinction between the three. Okay, got it. And then when you mentioned that you see them in a line, there have been times where I've meditated and I felt my guardian angel or I've been told, uh, what was her name, Karen, Iliana, Liliana, I forgot the name. Oh, yeah, something like that. But I, I felt her sitting next to me or around me. You mentioned that you see them in a line behind me. Is that just your perception of it? or okay, So mine could be that they're kind of surrounding me. Then. Correct. Yeah. So when I'm okay. uh, tuning in, and, and I'm trying not to do this without your permission, of course, we can oh, get into hey, Nicole, it a little please bit feel, later. <laughs> please feel free. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> Tune the, away. <laughs> yeah, the way that my, my spirit team helps me understand which one is which is that when I'm looking at someone, so Karen, for you, over your right shoulder, my, yeah, sorry, your left shoulder, my right. I see archangels and they're kind of like orbs or big beams of light. And then followed by that are usually the ascended masters kind of standing there. Guardian angels for me to understand, uh, it's just kind of a language that I worked out with my team, stand directly behind the person, kind of like I have your back, like so that's helping me to define and distinguish who they are. And then over like in a U on the other side is usually people's loved ones and then followed by their pets or animals who may have crossed over and that sort of thing. So it's really kind of like that U-shaped form so that I can help when I'm doing a reading or talking with someone. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's where they always stand or that they mm-hmm. that's where they always are. They're really not, um, they're more around you like a presence, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. I like that you shape that. It feels like a hug. Well, it that, does. That, <laughs> like wings kind of, kind of uh, yeah, wings kind of coming around. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That's how I've always pictured it. I've always been uh, like a you around me, which is perfect. Yes. Now, I got to ask. I mean, I got to say, right, that does seem like a crowded room that like we talked about before. Yeah. So, I mean, it almost, uh, now I can say this because we're Hispanic, both of us, Karen and I. So it's like a big Hispanic family following around, going to the doctor, going everywhere. All right? the cousins. All the cousins, all the everything. And so, the aunties and yeah, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are they the actual, like, let's, let's take our 
departed loved ones, mm -hmm. it, th they are around us or is it their energy around us? Is it something that we're carrying with us as a residual feel? Is it an actual being? What is it exactly? All excellent questions. You know, no one's ever asked me that before. So mm -hmm. the way it's been shown to me is that our loved ones, depending on the soul who's crossed over, they may have fully crossed over and they're not I want to say physically, but their energy isn't necessarily present around you because they are on the other side and they're in a very peaceful place. However, that doesn't mean that they still can't interact with you or what is called more like soul winks and give you signs and give you things like that. But they're not necessarily physically, energetically present, essentially, because they are on the other side. But it's almost like a telephone. I can pick up and call my mom on the telephone, but that doesn't mean that I'm still not, you know, having a connection to her, so mm -hmm. to speak, more telepathically with our loved ones. And then you have loved ones who are, I am not going, I am going to stay here because I either have work to do or I want to be supportive, more supportive of my family members. Or usually there's a, a period, obviously, of grief that people go through. And as that transition is still happening and occurring, they stay present. That's also why in a lot of religions, um, depending on the religion, there's a period of mourning and there's a period of time. Look at the Jewish religion versus Christianity and or how people bury their loved ones or dearly departed is because there is that moment when souls are still present before they officially cross over. But some stay and linger. And then you have ones where my guides angels have shown me, it's almost kind of like they send you to school where you can you can come back and forth, but you're you're in school and so you're not fully on the other side and you're not fully whatever. It's a, this transitory place. So to answer your question more specifically, it's usually I would call more their soul essence that mm -hmm. is either with you in that present moment or from the other side having that connection that way. So putting it in quantum mechanics terminology, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, please. We're mul <laughs> multidimensional <laughs> beings, so we exist in all different planes at the same time, right? Simultaneously. So they, they could be existing here in the present with us right now, but also in the ethereal plane. And like at school, like you mentioned, or maybe even incarnating again, and we'd still have them around us. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong. Yes, yes. And that's getting, you know, definitely in more of the weeds of it. But uh -huh. yeah, I believe I believe fully that time is not linear. There are multiple time spaces, realities happening all at the same time. And yes, our souls can have both in this lifetime individual experiences and multiple, but also our loved ones who cross over on the other side. It can kind of blow your mind and, and make it hurt a little bit when you think about uh -huh. it that way. But uh -huh. <laughs> it's also extremely comforting to me to know that we never, you know, energy just transforms. It never, it never really dies, truly dies. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can really, again, tap in and connect with our loved ones no matter what is, to me, very, uh, it keeps me at peace. Yeah, no, that, it's, a, it's a very, very comforting thought, to, for okay. sure. So I have a question about sure. Michael, Archangel. Mm -hmm. We've spoken to... Gosh, over 150 people, and some of them speak with angels, some of them don't. All different walks of life, all different modalities. And some of the people that I would say are not Christian at all talk about Michael the Archangel and how they, you know, speak with him. So it seems to me that he transcends all religions and all ideologies. How, who is he? Like, go ahead. <laughs> what can you tell me about him? <laughs> okay, I well, <laughs> so I try not to play favorites, but he's definitely my favorite. And that's because when I was little. He's very popular. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think especially in our work, you know, that you guys are involved in and that I'm involved in because he protects us. He is, um, all of our angels and guides protect us. Mm -hmm. However, Archangel Michael, that's literally his specific role. So if you think about all the things that you encounter, if you're an energy healer, if you're a medium and you communicate, whatever the role, there's this level of helping your energy. And I don't mean protected from demons or entities. I mean more protected as far as holding your energy, your space, helping you feel grounded, although he does do the other stuff too. Mm -hmm. but I was anyway, just going to go. He does kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's in religion. Kind of yes, Big flaming and, sword and the yeah. whole thing, right? <laughs> and slaying the dragon and all of that. Yeah, kind of stuff. yeah. Yeah, but um, as far as like who he is or what he is, uh, the way that archangels, there's a whole tier and hierarchy of angels, which, go, you know, I talk about and go into in, in the book, Looking for Angels. But ultimately, archangels are the, think about them as messengers. So they are closely associated to God, but they help bridge that gap between us and heaven or universal energy. And Michael in particular, again, through that protector type of role. And each of the archangels has a very specific role. 
Archangel Raphael helps with healing, Michael again with protection, Gabriel with communication, just some very high-level bullet points. Now, the reason why I think you see him so much, regardless of whether you're religious or not, is because he tends to have a very magnetic presence. Out of some of the archangels are a little bit more subtle as far as when they're around and they show up. But Michael kind of comes in like a bodyguard and just, boom. And like a so, bouncer in a club. <laughs> exactly. And so there's that. And I, you know, I think that when people have a close association with him, they have big work to do as well. So mm -hmm. hopefully that helps a little bit. But um, yeah, it, it does. It, it surprised me because I grew up in Catholic school. And so then we started getting into this and all of a sudden I hear people who are not, you know, Christian talking about Michael. I'm like, wait a minute, this is weird <laughs> because I thought he was just a religion, you know, like a mm -hmm. Christian thing. So how can okay, we can change topics after this? But one more question. <laughs> well, sure. How do you know, like, does he say I am Michael? Like, how do you know who he is? Do you just know? Does he like announce himself? Like, how, how do you know that that's who he is? Great question as well. I think that it's going to depend on the person and the experience. So uh, one of the things that Scott Garen and, and myself did as far as our book is we did a study and a survey that was global related to do you believe in angels? And so 75% of people, regardless of religion or affiliation or not, believe in angels based on the study. 75%? Yeah. Holy okay, cool. smokes. Yeah. And in my opinion, I think it's because, and Michael likes to make jokes, he said it's the word kind of like the gateway drug into spirituality. <laughs> because Mike and I, we're going to get along just yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're comforting. They offer us reassurance. They protect us. They guide us. So again, regardless of your affiliation or, or lack thereof, they're here for us. But 75% mm -hmm. of people globally in the study believe. 36% have had an encounter or an experience. Mm -hmm. Like, uh... Yeah, so I'll give you the list. <laughs> so the, fir the first, and this is where it goes to your question specifically, Karen. So I'm not doing a side note, but when you ask like how, mm -hmm. there's sure. through vivid dreams or recurring dreams that really stand out that you're like, wow, this, this is different. I, this is not just a normal, typical dream. Hearing their name aloud when there's no one there or there's no reason for your name being called. Experience like a strong sense of needing to do something or change something. This is also could also be your guardian angel kind of intervening or interacting on your behalf too, that sort of thing. Seeing repeating numbers or patterns, which wouldn't necessarily be Michael, uh, or smelling scents that aren't there. So when you ask the how do you know, it's usually through an encounter or an experience that you would have like through a dream. Some people see them. And so, and then it would mm -hmm. be the typical kind of Michael. He also shows up in a, for me at least, this blue color that's associated with him. You can like research and look it up, but he tends to have this very blue color that just is, is angelic. And so that's a distinction. Each of the angels kind of have a different color associated with them. So that's mm -hmm. how. For me, I, when I was little, I sensed an energetic presence in my room. And for days and weeks, I was trying to figure out what it was. And finally, I just was tuning in and saying, who are you? What are you? Whatever. And I heard Michael. And it wasn't until I got older and I started working more with angels and understanding them that I realized, holy, whatever. <laughs> this is Michael, <laughs> Archangel Michael. Right. You know? So anyway, hopefully that answered right. your question. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break early because I've got literally a pile of questions are getting bigger instead of shorter. So I want to get uninterrupted time with you, Nicole. When we come back, I want to dive a little bit into your memories of heaven when you were a kid. And I've also heard the story of how you and your co-author got together to write the book. And that's a really fascinating story. We'll dive into all that uh, right when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. We're talking to the Nicole Bigley from A Psychic Story. Uh, she also has written a fascinating book all about angels called Looking for Angels, A Guide to Understanding and Connecting with Angels. She's the co-author of that book. And before the break, we dove deeply into just what these beings are and who Archangel Michael was. And, and I do want to continue down that rabbit hole in a bit, but I, I would be remiss if we didn't at least touch on the fact that in the introduction I mentioned, when you were young, you were hit with a remembrance, memories of your time uh, in the astral plane prior to coming, being incarnated into this, into this world. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. 
So okay. first, before I kind of get to that, I wanted to explain that I just had this sense of knowing information or things that I wasn't necessarily sure how, and I thought everybody had it. So mm. uh, question, questions like when, I don't know why I'm thinking about this at three or four, but is there a God? Do I believe in God? Sort of questions and just knowing, no, there is. And it was when I would ask myself, well, why? It's because I would hear and feel, well, I remember. I remember being there. I remember having this experience or these experiences. And when I say God, I don't, again, mean the the religious aspect of it or what right. heaven, what, what we think heaven is. But anyway. Not a white guy with a beard sitting yeah, on the throne. Correct. Right. Correct. And so one night when my dad was tucking me into bed, I was around four. And he was explaining to me, he said, you know, you picked your mom and I. And I said, and he said, do you understand? And I go, oh, yeah, I understand. And he he was looked really shocked because he believed in reincarnation and that whole thing. And so he's like, well, tell me more. What do you mean? And I just all of a sudden it was kind of like when you forget something, but then you remember and it just flashes before your eyes. And I remember looking down on Earth, which I kind of think about it more as literally the galaxy because there was nothing around. At the same time, I felt very connected to everything. And looking down at the earth and seeing this little girl playing on in the grass. And then she ran it. She was playing outside with toys. And then she ran inside. And I said, that's her. I want her to be my mom. And I heard this voice say, as I went to kind of step forward, not that I have a, a human body, but went to step forward and leave. And they said, it's not time yet. And I felt very disappointed. And I went to turn around. And the moment I went to turn around, I heard it's time. And then the next thing I know, I was coming down. So that was my first memory of kind of what I call being on the other side, whether you want to call it heaven or what have mm -hmm. you. But it was just an immense se sense of peace, an immense sense of love. I was everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It was very surreal. And so that was my first memory. Well, so you were three or four when this happened? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I mean, so obviously, right, people talk about the fact that kids are closer to the veil than the rest of us. And I, I, the, the programming as we get older is what yes. kind of closes this off for us. But the fact that you were consciously remembering these things at three or four, that's, I don't think I've ever heard of someone quite that young to be able to elucidate that as clearly as you did was, was pretty fascinating. Yeah, that, it was really hard. Age. It was really hard to explain when you don't have words for it. And the best thing yeah. is just it's it's like a memory, like a very vivid memory that you have that you're you're just like, OK, this is what happened. And I could yeah. see everything plain. But the the thing that stood out the most to me was the feeling. It was the connection of we're not separate. We're all connected together. We're all connected to this. Again, I didn't know what to call it, but this source, this energy. And mm -hmm. that never really left me as I got older. It started it like you said, it, it felt more and more distant. And so anyway, that, yeah, that, that to me, as I got older, helped me understand why I didn't have quite as much amnesia as a lot of other people, because my parents were just open and allowing me mm -hmm. to share and didn't force me to kind of don't talk about that. That's not real. Didn't happen type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I right. had that kind of aspect in nurturing as I got right. older. Any fear associated with it? Anything that freaked you out or made you nervous about knowing that you were more than what you are right now? No. In time? fact, it gave me just an immense sense of, of peace and comfort. I do remember one time, I think I might have been five or six, because it's hard to remember the ages when you're that young, mm -hmm. walking down the sidewalk and looking at my body and going, I have a body. I'm human here and having this really weird kind of, and that freaked me out a little bit because then, yeah, because then I'm like, what's going on here? It's almost like I, <laughs> like something clicked consciously. Now, granted, also as children, you're starting to develop your personality more. You're starting to, eat. all of those things are happening from a physical and a biological standpoint. So it was probably, probably part of it. But the fact that I immediately went to, I'm not this, again, didn't have the words for it, spiritual being, and I'm in this human body now. It's very surreal. That would probably be the only, I would say, for not freak out moment, but the moment where I was like, what's going on? Yeah, I think I would have several. <laughs> uh, do you feel like you're still as connected as you were back then? Or has that kind of faded away over time? And, it, and you, you have to work at it? Both. So as I got older, closer to teenage years, and then college, it was very distant. And that's a that's mm -hmm. a normal, natural state as we're going in. And also, you know, we're, we're getting older, and we're starting to develop that sense of identity about who we are as an adult and also not a lot of kids, teenagers or in early <laughs> college or, taught, or at least when I was going to school, we're talking about this as much. Right. So that felt distant. 
And just to be very short, because I don't want to take up too much time, as I got older through career and other things, I started to um, really miss that connection of all of the things that I remembered when I was younger. And so that catapulted me to create the podcast and all these other things. And that gave me back that connection. But I will also say that when I had my Reiki certification and went through the levels in my early 20s, that kind of blew the door off, so to speak, because mm-hmm. it reminded me of angels. I could, I started to physically see them more through lights and other things that eventually kind of dissipated. Don't see that as much anymore. But I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is real. This is happening again. And it was just exciting me to get back into it. So I would say it ebbs and flows for people mm-hmm. like me and or somebody that's just getting into this and not to be discouraged if it does ebb and flow because that's just a natural state of the process. Right. I'm trying really hard not to be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll work with you and you can you can speak to your guides and angels. I, I mean, I'm going to take you up on it because mm-hmm. literally this is what this show has been all about is mm-hmm. finding that that connection. And being true, I, I also felt it with Reiki when I became a Reiki practitioner. Yeah. That's the first time I actually felt the energy and I was like, okay, there is something here I don't recognize. It's mm-hmm. that I don't, I, you know, this is, this is not physical. I mean, it is physical, but it's not from the physical world, but it didn't blow the doors off of everything for me. A lot of people say that, that it does. All of a sudden their, their spiritual gifts come become wide open and all that kind of stuff. So it makes sense. To me, I think I'm just... You're set in your head. Uh, you're very logical. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Energetically, yes. you're very logical. You have a, there's a this and then there's a that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm trying to make it be not here nor there. And in mm-hmm. fact, make it more in the middle somewhere. But yes, at my entire, and that, that probably comes from where I was raised and how I was raised and the people I was around. And it, like, I just, I, I need I need to wrap my head around it the right way before I can say, yes, this is real. Now, having said that, everyone who listens to the show knows i am come a long way since we first started the show. <laughs> and I do believe this stuff is real. I know this stuff is real. But maybe because I want to experience it so much, I'm blocking myself from seeing or feeling or astral projecting or anything like that. So little by little, I mean, we're, there have been things that have been happening lately that, that And I think you also, you always talk about the act of wanting something makes the universe think you want to want. Yes. So you continue wanting. Yes. Yes. Thank you you for throwing quantum physics at me. (laughs) Yes. That's exactly, (laughs) you're absolutely right. The the act of of, uh, looking for the smallest particle creates the smallest particle that you want. And it will continuously be a smaller particle. I totally understand. But damn it, I want it. <laughs> yes. So Well, there's lots of things you can do. And it just really depends on where you are at in the process. That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want me do you want me do you want me to give you a quick read or do you want me to give you Ooh. some things for your listeners that they can do or or both? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Wow, I haven't done this before like this. So this is fun. Okay, let me just close my eyes for a moment. <laughs> Okay. Well, first of all, when you were talking about you, you've come a long way from the very beginning of the podcast and where you are now, it was almost like they were showing me in my mind's eye breadcrumbs. So as soon as we're open to these things, to the possibilities, I just got chills, which was also my guides and angels way of giving me a message and confirmation. But as soon as we're open, then they give us more. So um, it's to your point about not trying to force it, not trying to control it, that will block you. But this podcast, you getting into what you're already doing, that is a huge part of your spiritual journey and growth. And just keep doing that aspect is what they're saying, because that's going to continue to just open the doors for you. The other thing that I heard, and I'm hearing again, so anytime I hear a message twice or three times, I'm like, okay, they're saying pick a lane. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So so you're laughing. So you probably know what yeah. that means. But yeah, um, I totally. think, it, and also you said this a little bit too, like, is it astral travel? Is it this, that, or the other? But for you, because you're, they're showing me like you're spread in many directions. And um, I'm assuming that, uh, cause I know we've talked offline, but it's part partially your job, the podcast, also the spirituality stuff. So it's going to be hard for you to focus. And so they're like, what is it that you want to kind of do in the next several months? Do you want to connect more with your higher self? Do you want to connect more with your guides and angels? Is it more that you're trying to do more self-care and allow your soul to heal from past trauma or past experiences or things or release? You can do all of that, but at the same time, it's hard if you're just doing a little bit at a time with each um, and in what that looks like. Astral travel, I think it's fascinating. It's fun. But man, for me, I, I, I tried doing this as a kid. 
And you had, I did it every single night for every, for like months and months and months. And it happened once. And so again, it goes back to depending on what it is that you want to do. Now, I am feeling that you want to understand more in alignment with your higher self and that soul purpose. And what does that look like? And if you're feeling open to it, better understanding your spirit team and that connection. So that's that piece of it. I don't want to get too like personal or in deep in this reading, but sure. that's what they're just saying. They're saying pick pick a focus and stick with that and then make an actual objective about what that is. And I'm feeling honestly that it has something to do with this podcast. So I don't know if there's some conversations you've been having on the side or whatever, but it's like this is a part of my alignment where I'm going. But at the same time, they're, it's, it's like they're showing me in a car like. If you focus on the podcast and you're focusing on doing something spiritually for that growth, the car's taking off together versus it being in these separate cars and in these separate lanes. If that makes any mm -hmm. sense to yours resonating. It does completely. Okay. Yeah, I, it, in, in fact, it's nothing that I didn't already feel, but mm -hmm. you don't kind of want to face it, right? It's, it's one of these <laughs> things where, yes, I understand. So it really mm -hmm. resonates when you're saying that uh, because you're right. I am spread incredibly mm -hmm. thin. To clarify, I didn't mean pick a lane as far as your job or the podcast. They were saying pick a lane in terms of what is it that you want to develop spiritually. So, and when I said the podcast, I was getting, and I'm just, this is a brainstorm. This is not what they're saying right now, but it's sure. like, let's say you work with someone and you're working with someone like once a week or whatever, whether you use the content for the podcast or not, it could be about you healing, healing aspects of yourself. It could be about you finding more alignment with your higher self. Those are some options. Like mm -hmm. pick something that you can focus on to help you develop that spiritual aspect of it and then use it potentially for podcast content to show people that growth. And then you're doing both. You get what I'm saying? Like you're doing the podcast, yep. you're doing the mm -hmm. spiritual growth, but you're not being pulled in different directions with the focus. And then everything else is just going to make that much be that much more clear for you because you're like, aha, now I see what's happening. They give mm -hmm. us breadcrumbs. And they don't tell us everything because they want us to continue to move forward. If they had told me all the things I would be doing aside from the podcast, I honestly wouldn't have started it. <laughs> it's just way too much work. Not that I don't love it. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's yeah. that's kind of what they mean. Absolutely. get it. So I do want to ask you about the book because the way that it came about is pretty amazing. Uh, you are a co-author of this book. Let's just start at the beginning. <laughs> what First, what made you want to write this book? I didn't want to write the book. <laughs> at first, <laughs> only because, yes, like you, I have a full time job and then I do the podcast. But what mm -hmm. happened was I was in preparing for a session for someone. This was back in fall of last year. And I would, and when I do that, I have a very kind of specific process, which I'm not going to get into, but I'm like sitting there and I'm waiting for information to come to me for this person based on the area of focus that they wanted. And it was kind of like, um, I don't know, like if you primarily communicate via text on your phone. But then a phone call is coming in and you're thinking, why is somebody calling me? I never take phone calls. And you're like, oh, all the so time. <laughs> all, it's just yeah. annoying because you're like, stop yeah. calling me, text me type of thing. So it was yeah. kind of that incoming information where it felt like a phone call. And I heard in my mind, you need to write about us because the question that one of the questions the person has was, how do I connect with my, my spirit team and my guides and angels? And I said, is this for me? And they said, yes. And then I said, well, what do you mean write about you? Like a blog post? <laughs> what do you mean? And they were like a book. And I started to get a little annoyed because of the fact that I have a lot going on. And I'm like, geez, old Pete's like, you want me to do yet? Yeah, <laughs> you want me to do another thing? And I was in the process of starting to set energetic boundaries. And so this was a, so I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm no, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, you know, <laughs> so I said to Michael and to my other guides and angels, all right, if you want me to write about you and whatever that divine timing is, or if it's for my best and highest good or others best and highest good, then you need to bring me the resources, whether that's a person to help ghostwrite um, or the, the funds to do it, public, all of the things. And I listed out these things. And I kind of put that on the shelf thinking, all right, that's going to take months, 48 <laughs> hours, not even later. I have an email and it says, hi, I'm looking for a co-author for a book about angels from Dr. Scott Guerin. And then he had had a holy, yeah, he had had a wholly separate other experience before where somebody was telling him a medium and a psychic, like, you need to have a female voice in this, you, like, for all the reasons. And you need to have somebody that has a modern day take on it because it was about religion and science and psychology was the portion he wrote. 
So he's like, I don't know. It's like, who do I find? I've been listening to Cole's podcast. She talks about angels. And so he sends the email. 48 hours. And then I laughed when I got that email because I said, (laughs) all right, I have to honor what I said. You brought me all the things that you said. So Mm -hmm. that's how we that's how we met. That takes incredible bravery. Yeah. You you want me to do this and you do this, right? And to ask the, well, I yeah. mean, who says no to Michael? <laughs> right. Hold my beer. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, like you said, I too have to pay the bills and all these other things. So it's like, yeah, right. well, yeah either. Yeah. So line it up, God, line it up, universe, line it up, spirit team, if it's in divine timing and order. And they did. So they that's showed how we you. Got yeah, they did. They really did. <laughs> so it works. But also be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Yes. You just might get it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, that's so true. <laughs> So then how did the process work? Did you write some of it and then the doc wrote some of it or did you, it was a collaborative effort? How did that work? So Scott had already written the first couple parts, which was angels in religion, angels in science, angels in psychology. And then, so when he had reached out to me, he thought it was going to be kind of a quick hit list of here are the things that you do if you want to connect with your guides and angels. And I was like, hold the phone. (laughs) You can't just then all of a sudden jump to this portion. And so I sat down (laughs) and I thought, you know, all of these sessions that I've been having for the last year or so, when people come to me about connecting, I was like, it's all there. I just need to write it down. And so how you do it, and this is what my portion of the book is, and also how your listeners can start to do it, is really start to understand your intuitive abilities. So we all have intuitive abilities. To me, it's instinct. It's, it kind of goes back to if you think about your gut knowing or that gut instinct that we talk about that kept us alive for centuries upon centuries upon centuries. You can sense danger around you. There's a tiger mm-hmm. or something else, but you're not really sure, but you sense it. And so your spidey senses are up. That's instinct. You know, it's human instinct. But then there's also a level which I would say supernatural is just the natural not yet explained on the intuitive scale. So you have things like where it, so let me take a step back. Your intuitive senses are mirrors to your physical senses. So think about seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, those sorts of things. It's just, there's also another level on the spiritual side energetically. So you have clairvoyance, which is seeing, clairaudience, which is hearing. You have claircognizance, which is knowing. You have clairintellect, which is thinking, empathy, which is your emotions, clairsentience, which is that physical feeling. So you feel something in your stomach or your head or something like that. You have clairtagency, which is touch, clairsalience, which is smelling, and then clairgustance, which is tasting. There's a lot, right? Mm. So when you think about it, some of those psychic or intuitive abilities are going to be turned on more strongly for certain people. You may have one, you may have all of them, or maybe in volume. And that is how our guides and angels communicate with us. So if you have that kind of knowing an awareness of how your intuition works for you and how that think about it as a radio signal you know you're tuning mm-hmm. this turning the station and if you're on that station they're able to kind of come in and and vice versa so that's the first step is understanding that and then being open and being open to what you are receiving and how it comes in it sounds simple mm-hmm. but that in a nutshell is, is how it works right yeah yeah and, and it's not simple because you have to trust and not think you're just yeah. you know my Am I just being weird or, yeah. you know, so that that's the hard part. And then you have the other side where, uh, am I feeling that? Am I, no, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. right. And someone Did like me. Did that? Uh, right. Like someone like me who doesn't really, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm very sensitive. Like I don't feel energies as strongly as some other people. A Mack truck could hit me in the face and I'm like, what, what was that? Did something, <laughs> right? Cause, so so it, it's more difficult for me, Um, which is why going back to picking a lane, I think my I need to just be quiet. I need to I need to find that peace inside myself and just and get in touch with the energies around me because I'm really disconnected and I need to work on that. So does he have to pick a lane or could a lane pick him? Mm, mm. Good question. Both. Because if you don't pick a lane, then the lane will pick you. <laughs> okay. Right. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of <laughs> like whatever your purpose is, whatever you're here to do. I fully believe we're all gonna get there. Some of us take that mm-hmm. windy path, some of us take the more direct path to get there. And so yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's you know, not to sound too cliche about this, but it is about trusting your gut and going there. And I keep hearing higher self. I hear, I keep hearing connecting with that. And you just said it, going within, going inward. And the more you can do that and be present and understand and trust to your point, Karen, as well, trust, then you're building that connection with yourself. You're in alignment. You start to feel your intuition more, however that shows up for you. You are a very highly sensitive person, but you think more logically. And Mm -hmm. so from that logic, you're going to want to see, you're going to want to hear, you're going to, you want that type of tangible reaction and experience. Yeah. Yeah. 
But, mm. Which is ironic because I've been told I'm clear cognizant, which means I just got to take it on faith. What I need is actually more clear, sen- not sentient, cl- what did you say, clear tangent? Oh, I mean, yeah, to touch. Feel it? Yeah, no. Yeah. So here's the thing. It, it, just because you have one doesn't mean you don't have the others. We all have uh, them. It's it just, I'm not a natural born athlete. If you told me to run around, you know, my neighborhood, it's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> and if it does, I'm going to go really, really slow. I'm going to have to take the time to figure out how to really amp myself up and run. But I'm a thinker. I'm a feeler. That's going to come a lot more naturally. So however you operate in your day-to-day mm-hmm. life and you prefer that method of communication is usually how your intuition also shows up for you as well. Gotcha. So you may have that ability kind of dialed down, but when you focus on the others or the connection with yourself and connection with your higher self, it almost just blossoms. It's That's part of that control. Fun story. For several weeks, I was feeling really sick, but it was different every single day. One day I would have a really bad headache. Another day I would feel really tired. Another day it was feeling really nauseous and I could not figure out. I was like, am I dying? What is going on? And I started to put two and two together because it was when I was writing the book and my angel said, sometimes people's psychic abilities just turn on. And I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I don't want that physical feeling of feeling someone else's sickness or whatever, because that's something. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then they said, well, and I was like, I don't really know if I believe this, but this is what you're saying. So I'm going to write it down and I'm going to see and whether or not it makes it into the book. Again, be careful what you ask for. And so I'm (laughs) feeling these physical sensations. And I realized it was before, days before I was having sessions with people. And finally I said, aha, I see what you did there. (laughs) And so then I said, you know what? I don't want to feel them unless I'm in session with someone or unless it's something really important. I can't function like this. And so mm-hmm. it got turned off. So I say that because if you have that clear cognizance, maybe it's dialed down, but you don't have to focus on building that up. Focus on what you feel is important to you at this time, and then it will come naturally. Gotcha. So you can actually turn it on, turn it off just by <laughs> requesting it. All right. Uh, so then, Nicole, I'm really curious. In your estimation, what happens when we die? You know, I, that's a very hotly debated topic, obviously. Uh-huh. <laughs> I feel it goes, and this is again, just from not that I've died and come back to life in this lifetime that I know of, but I would say that we go back to source. And when I say source, I remember it was literally like being in space. And we were all connected. I say we, all the souls. It was like we're we're part of this massive ocean, essentially, but we're Mm -hmm. still this drop. So you, you, but there wasn't really separateness or individualism in that sense, but there was conscious awareness. It sounds really hard to describe, but it's just going back. You can Mm -hmm. be somewhere at a moment's notice, but that somewhere is TBD because it is a time, space, reality dimension. Who's to say? Um, so that is how I remember it. That doesn't mean though, that certain people's versions of heaven don't exist. I do believe that if there's something where you want to go and you're around surrounded by all your loved ones and your pets, and you're running through a field of sunflowers that probably exists (laughs) because that's your idea of heaven. Is that the Mm -hmm. actual reality of heaven? That is that person's idea and, and, and want and desire for heaven. But that doesn't mean you can't create it. We're creating all day long in Mm -hmm. here on this physical earth. We're creators. We're manifestors. We've created this physical body through God's image or through that. So it's a hard question because I think it depends on what you think or believe your idea of the other side or heaven is. To me, I can only say from what I remember. And that was Mm -hmm. I'm going back and I'm being kind of plugged back into universal source. So with that mindset, how do you feel about death? If you had asked me right when I was born, when I remember when I was literally being birthed and came in mm-hmm. the physical body, I would have been like, send me back right away. Send mm-hmm. me back. Mm-hmm. But now um, when I think about that, it makes me somewhat sad because there's a reason we're here. Mm-hmm. We're here to taste. We're here to hug and feel. We're here to love. We're here to have all those physical experiences that we can't necessarily have on the other side. So that part makes me want to stay here and continue mm-hmm. to live this beautiful life with all the ups and downs. So, but at the same time, I feel happy because I remember there was just such, again, sense of peace and love, none of the other feelings or emotions that we experience here. And that feels lighter. It right. just feels so yeah. much freer. If someone's listening to us right now and they really want to 
engage in a personal relationship with their guardian angels or archangels or whatever it might be, how does someone start down that road? Mm -hmm. So we talked about the intuition. So just be aware and start to mm -hmm. just kind of start to think what, how do I process and receive information both physically and then spiritually or through your intuitive lens? And then I would recommend that if you're open to doing it, and that's what you so desire, in taking a moment, five, 10 minutes, closing your eyes, taking some really deep breath, breaths in and out, and just ask, you know, just start to feel a peace. You don't have to meditate. If you are a meditator, great. But just start to feel more of that peace and that calmness. And then when you're in a really great place and you feel, all right, I'm there, or what I call oneness, then you ask. It's literally that simple. And you can say, okay, God, universe, source, guides and angels, higher self, I ask to connect with you, to receive messages that are clear and succinct. And then at the same time, if you want specific relationships or you feel that connection to Michael, you feel that connection to a loved one, you feel that connection to your a guardian angel, like you were saying, well, in the very beginning, then just mm -hmm. ask specifically for that as well. You can be more general and specific about your spirit team or you can be, you know, call on one in particular. And then you, what I call set it and release it. You release it. There's not the need to control. And then you go about your day or your evening with keeping an open mind and trusting, as you said, Karen, of what the information is you're going to receive. You're going to receive. Messages are going to be subtle at first. And remember all the lists, the ways that I listed how it can be. You may see a repeating number, you may see all that stuff, but those are messages. Those are winks from the other side, from our spirit team, that then when we're in gratitude of receiving and we say, thank you, even if you're in doubt, thank you. I think that was a message. I might be in doubt, but thank you. It happens more and more. And then that builds more and more. And you can start to have more beautiful relationships with your spirit team. I love that. And the power of gratitude is just tremendous. Mm, yeah. so that it's, frequency it's, it's and vibration, yeah. it amplifies, it anchors us mm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I've heard, and maybe you can confirm or deny, I've heard that angels cannot help us without us asking for it specifically. Is that the case? Well, so that's why in the beginning I said our guardian angels we've already contracted with. So essentially mm -hmm. we've already given them permission. And okay. that's how they can intervene. So our guardian angels, they're like, hey, you already gave me permission. Essentially, it would be <laughs> like if I said, hey, Will, if you see me in a really dire situation in my life, you have permission to redirect me or to help me out. You so gotcha. that's so that's that part. Now, archangels, ascended masters, and even our loved ones, we do need to give them permission because we have free will and choice. That goes back to the spiritual laws that I was mentioning in the beginning. It's to help keep everything in order. But also, hopefully, that gives people comfort as well. So that's why when you say the prayer, it's you can be general about your spirit team or you can be as specific as you want related to that. But yes, they are not going to interfere with us unless we give them that door open. I had At least that's that before. Yeah, that's my really? opinion. Wow, yeah. yeah, that's my opinion. Um, but a lot of other practitioners and people fully believe that because that's what we've been told yeah. by our team. Um, mm -hmm. I have heard that on, on several occasions. Now, I, I listen to your show and a lot of mm -hmm. other shows as well, and I've heard this repeatedly. So it's a question I've had because I keep forgetting to ask. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so let me just put it out there. Everyone who's listening, well, not everybody, all <laughs> light beings are listening and wants to help. By all means, you have my permission because I really, uh, I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to get there. So For your best and highest good. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's mm -hmm. important to, to mention, right? Because sometimes what we want or we ask for is not necessarily what's in our highest good. So we need to be careful to say that. Because, mm -hmm. And that's yep. some of the times when people ask, well, you know, how, why was this happening to a certain person? Well, maybe it's in their highest good. They've got to go through something. They got to figure something out before they. Exactly. Um, Scratching the surface doesn't even start to <laughs> nope. cover the topic. Uh, this has been a fascinating conversation, and I, I know that we've got a lot more to talk about. But if someone was interested in, in getting your book, how does someone get about getting a hold of that book? Yeah, so if you go to lookingforangelsbook.com, that's available, so you can go. We decided to skip pre-order to just make it easy for people, especially as the holidays are coming, so that you can get it straight. Yep, and that's and right. I've got a good idea for a Christmas gift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Buy one uh, for yourself and all your loved ones. <laughs> Please. Right. And if you order now, <laughs> the book, once again, is Looking for Angels, A Guide to Understanding and Connecting with Angels. And it is going to be the go-to resource for all things angelic on both the scientific and the spiritual side. So I'm excited to, to get my hands on it. So, Nicole, fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insight and your expertise. I really, really 
I am 100% convinced that the information that we have put forth out there is going to help a lot of people. Oh. So thank you for taking and this I time. I hope so. I hope so. No, no doubt about it. So thanks so much. And we'll see you again really soon. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Ours as well. And a huge thank you to you. We know that there are tons of options out there. And having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we have. If you did and you feel called to give back, we invite you to visit our website at skepticmetaphysician.com where you can donate to the show or subscribe as a member through our Buy Me a Coffee campaign. Your support will go a long way towards allowing Karen and I to bring you these wonderful conversations and teachings in more and more robust ways. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. Thank you.